Zach's Screen of the Week, an overview of a timely stock screening strategy aimed at helping you produce more profitable investing results. This time we're talking about your stock and earnings yield with Kevin Matris, our top stock screener here at Zacks.com. Now, earnings yield, something often discussed, but not always fully understood. Right. What is earnings yield? Uh, earnings yield is, is really just that. It is a way of measuring what your yield is or what your anticipated return will be on a stock investment. And you're figuring this out by looking at the price paid as well as the earnings that go along with it. Uh, the calculation on an earnings yield is really just the inverse of a P.E. ratio. So let's go through P.E. first, all right? Uh, the P.E. ratio, of course, is just price divided by earnings. So if you have a stock trading at a price of 35 bucks and uh, that stock has earnings of $3, you have a P.E. ratio of 11.67 which means it's selling at 11.67 times earnings. Or another way of looking at this is that you are paying $11.67 for every $1 of earnings from the company. Now, if you look at the earnings yield, again, the earnings yield is simply the inversion, okay? It is earnings divided by price. So, a stock with $3 of earnings, Trading at a price of 35, right, that's 3 divided by 35, that has an earnings yield of 0 0.0857 or 8.57%. So this is also known as the EP ratio, uh, and it's always expressed as a percentage. But a stock with an earnings yield of 8.57% can also be looked at as 8.57 cents of earnings for every $1 of investment. Now, all of this stuff is just potential because price and earnings change all the time, mm -hmm. but this is how you can kind of gauge what kind of yield or return you can get on a stock. So how do you use it? Well, the, the, what people will typically do and how I use it is I will look at the earnings yield and I will compare it to other stocks, but the, the best way to use it is to compare the earnings yield of a stock to the earnings yield that you will see on like a government security like the 10-year T-bill. So conventional wisdom has it that if you see the yield on the stock market is lower than the yield on the 10-year T-bill, that means the stocks are overvalued. If, however, the yield on the stock market is higher than the 10-year T-bill, well, then that would suggest that stocks are undervalued. The whole premise with this is that, you know, you have investors or, or you have investments competing for investor interest. Mm -hmm. This is true for bonds. This is true for stocks. This is true for anything. So there has to be a higher yield paid to the stock investor for the additional risk he is assuming in comparison to the virtual risk-free investment that you are getting on the 10-year T-bill. So if you look at it, if earnings go up, the yield should go up. If earnings go down, the yield should go down. Looking at it from a price perspective, uh, it's opposite. If the price uh, goes up, the yield goes down. If the price goes down, the yield goes up. So am I correct in saying that some people did use this to forecast the downturn that began in 07? It really was a, a fantastic uh, barometer because if you were to look at it in 2007, June of 2007, uh, the yield on the 10-year T-bill back then was 4.95%. It seems like an eternity from, from yeah. where we are right now considering how high those yields were. But again, it was almost 5% on the 10-year back then. If you were to look at the earnings yield on the S&P back then, though, it was only 4.19%. So there was virtually no risk premium considering the amount of risk one had to take to invest in stocks. So again, with the earnings yield on the S&P being below the 10-year, stocks at that point were considered way overvalued. And sure enough, shortly thereafter, we saw the market really tank. Uh, but then, if you were to take a look at March of 2009, we all know now through hindsight that that was the beginning of a fantastic rally in stocks. But if you take a look at uh, where the S&P was, the earnings yield on the S&P, 
that was 9.51%, and the uh, earnings yield on the Treasury was 2.89. So stocks were grossly undervalued at that point. Mm -hmm. Now, stocks could have gotten more undervalued, but again, we know that they didn't, and that led to one of the biggest rallies that is still going on. Yeah. If you take a look at where the earnings yield is right now, it really is a telltale sign. I know a lot of people are wondering, are stocks going to go up? Are stocks going to go down? What's going to happen? Everybody is turning schizophrenic based on trying to make these predictions. But just by looking at the earnings yield, this is what it's saying. The earnings yield for the S&P using a 12-month forward projected earnings mm -hmm. is 7.63%. The earnings yield on the 10-year Treasury is 1.63. So just using that measure, you can still say confidently that stocks are still a very attractive investment. All right, so run down the parameters on the screen. Would you? Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, here we go. Uh, I'm just looking at companies that are trading over $5. That's just a personal preference of mine. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm looking at companies with an average daily volume of 100,000 shares. Once again, a personal preference, pro plus that's, that, that means it's liquid enough. Um, I want the earnings yield to be greater than or equals to 8%. So I want my stocks to have an earnings yield well above the 10-year, but also above the average for the S&P. Uh, and I want the 12-month projected growth rate to also be greater than the S&P, and everything's being applied to companies with a Zach's rank of less than or equals to two, which is a buy or a strong buy. All right, give us a little sample of what came through. Yeah, there were, uh, when I ran it this morning, I think there was like about 63 or 65 stocks that came through, whole diverse set of stocks. Here's five that look kind of cool. Uh, Blackstone, which I like, uh, that's also in the financial industry, one of the top sectors, by the way. But that has an earnings yield of 13.84%. You've got Marathon Petroleum with a 14% uh, earnings yield. RLJ Lodging, 11%, United Rentals, 11%, and Valiant Pharmaceuticals, 85 There were stocks on that list that had yields uh, close to 20%, but every single stock on that list had a yield of greater than 8%. And these are great companies to look at if you're still trying to figure out which ones have a greater chance of success, what can I uh, hope to, uh, to make on these stocks, and are these things undervalued or overvalued? This is a great way of doing it. Do you own any or are you still looking at them? Uh, I do have, I got Blackstone and RLJ. Okay. Way to go, Kevin. <laughs> 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 the text version of this week's screen should be appearing in the stock picking strategy section of our homepage at zax.com if you want to read about it. And if you want to know more about the research wizard, that's the tool Kevin uses to achieve all of these screens, then zax.com slash research wizard is where you should go. With Kevin Matris and the screen of the week, I'm Terry Ruffalo.